Hi everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swellwatch on SurfingMagazine.com. It's May 21st, 2016, and it's been a long time since I did a video, but now it's time to definitely catch up on what's been happening with El Nino. What's going on with La Nina? Now that it does appear that we're going into that, but models still seem to be confused on exactly what's been going on. But it's not all bad news. We think about El Nino, we think about, yeah, we're going to get some big surf during the winter time, but La Nina actually can give us some benefit for the summer, and I want to show you what's going on with that, especially what's going to be happening for it looks like Memorial Day weekend to see some surf coming to Southern California and of course all points along uh, California as well. But what's causing that? And of course the shift in our climate, uh, how, that, how that is having an effect on what's actually going on right now, but what we might expect also for maybe the coming winter. It's a little early to call some of that right now, but I wanted to show you the progress of what's going on as well as what I'm talking about in my reports on surfingmagazine.com for that trio of storms that's headed our way, uh, excuse me, the trio of swells headed our way for the Memorial Day weekend. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. This is what's going on right now. So the first thing to talk about is the sea surface temperature anomalies. I won't bore you to death too long with that, but just to show you what's going on between El Nino and La Nina. Those are two opposites. And we can see what's happening now in the equatorial Pacific, our El Nino zone. We've changed to some colder water. This blue is colder water. We were in a lot of red, as you may recall, just even a few months ago. So that's really been cooling down. One thing to note, though, is that we still have a lot of warm water. This is abnormal. This is uh, anomalies here. So we're still seeing a lot of abnormally warm water around the Pacific. That's a lot different than things were back in 1998, right after the big El Nino. Still a lot of back then, we could see a lot of warm water that was still lingering in that equatorial zone, especially right off of uh, Chile, excuse me, right off of uh, Peru, Ecuador, in this area here. So right off of this area of our, what we know as our El Nino 3, 3.4 zones out here, we still had a fairly good amount of warm water. It was starting to fade, but more importantly, we had a lot of cold water that was still lingering around a good portion of the Pacific. So it was that delta that actually can cause a lot of differences that would happen with the storm formation because of the influence of the jet stream. When we have a lot of warm water in one area, it definitely has more of an impact. Everything when it comes to weather obviously is a difference in pressure, difference in uh, temperature causing that pressure. So we've got a bigger delta back in 1998 than what we have right now. So a little bit of a doldrum kind of going on right now, but it does appear that we could be going into a La Nina, although I yet have, haven't seen yet a La Nina pattern develop quite serpentine like this and in such a narrow area, but no two El Ninas are alike and neither are two La Ninas. When we take a look at the forecast, this is a lot different than what models were showing just a couple months ago, where originally, well, when things were starting to drop off after our major El Nino peak late last year, we got a somewhat of a rise, and it started dropping off somewhat, then there was this precipitous drop, I mean just an intense drop in uh, sea surface temperature anomalies around the El Nino 3.4 zone, saying that, hey, we're going into a La Nina, we're going into a La Nina fast. That's so different than what models were saying where above the line, El Nino predictions, below the nine line is La Nina predictions. There were a lot more model predictions that were above the line going into late, uh, into the late 2016, early 2017. But now that we see it on what's happening right now, the mean between all the models is saying count on La Nina for this coming winter. So there's a difference, obviously it's almost a, a polar opposite, that what happens with the jet stream. So this is the jet stream right now, down around the southern hemisphere, and this is where it actually has more of an impact. Remember, we're looking for southern hemisphere storms for the near term, uh, because that's where the winter is located right now. So that's where the jet streams affect, will affect then of course the rest of the, uh, the surf across the Pacific. We'll worry about winter time in a few months. For right now, let's take a look. So the jet stream right now is kind of in doldrums in this area. This is Antarctica down here, this is South Pole. We've got New Zealand over here, and over here we have Chile, and California is located north of the equator way up here. So storms that form in this region can send swell our way. They have to move northward though to do that. A lot of times, and what happened last summer, during an El Nino uh, year, we have a jet stream that normally forms very tight across the pole and very strong. But you can see that's very weak right now. There's not a whole lot going on. Now watch what happens as we move the models forward in time. This is an FN Mach model, by the way, very good model to see this type of stuff. But as we move those models forward in time, 
boom, we start seeing this undulation. And I've been calling this the bulge pattern. Now there was one very similar to that a few weeks ago, and that's what sent then the southern hemisphere swells our way that we've been seeing this past week. So this is a result of not having a strong, consistent jet stream across the pole, but still a great difference in pressure. So this is uh, intense low pressure coming off of the uh, off Antarctica, and then high pressure undulations on either side of that, and that can send storms our way. So another bulge pattern forming, and because of this undulation, because of these intense amounts of pressure on either side, there's some cool stuff that's going on. So. If we take a look right now at the sea surface heights, and we take a look at the significant wave heights going on, I'm going to show you those three storms that we were talking about. First off, Tasman Sea area right here. Remember that big undulation that was between what was shown in the Pitcairn region? When we go back here, this undulation going uh, south, and this one going south also, pressure on both sides of that being quite intense. We can see some of the results of that here. We're in the Tasman Sea, very powerful storm throwing swell our way. One over here, this is Easter Island. So this right here, this storm, a lot of that energy gets soaked up by the South Pacific Islands. It's hard to see probably on this model, little dots here and there, but there's a lot of uh, obstructions between getting to California, which would be up here, compared to the Tasman Sea area. Still, swell headed our way. This actually is a lot closer to us, and a lot closer to Central America. Central America will be seeing this Easter Island swell in around the 26th. It'll take a few days to get then to us compared to where this is angled. We'll be seeing both of that, both the uh, Central America region and California will be seeing swell from this around the uh, 29th, 30th time frame. The swell from this will be intermittent because it is coming through a lot of obstructions, a very large distance. This is about 5,500 nautical miles from Southern California. This is more like about 4,000 nautical miles. Remember, the Earth is curved, so it's a little bit deceiving looking at a, a flat Mercator projection like this. But anyways, let's move the models forward in time. I was calling this one originally uh, Baby Bear, and I was calling this one Mama Bear. And if you've been following me on Facebook, you knew there was a Papa Bear, and let's watch what happens. Around that area where we started seeing that undulation moving forward that bulge pattern, the jet stream breaking apart enough to allow some more storm formation. Now, we can see what I was calling Papa Bear starting to move north, but that isn't as strong as models had been showing just even a couple days ago. Still, pretty good sized system moving northward, ideal trajectory, still at about a distance of about 4,500 to 5,000 nautical miles away. So for its size, still looking pretty good. The arrival time on that would probably be around the same time as the Tasman Sea Swell, which would be around Sunday the 29th into Monday the 30th. Now we've still got, you can see this is still on long range. This is a 96 hour model here. We're looking here at just zero hours coming out of uh, Tasman and also near Easter Island. But the major swells though, coming off that portion of the undulating northward bulge coming off of Antarctica. 48 hours is a minimum, so we still got a couple more days to actually see what's going on with these swells and what they're going to do to Southern California. But the moral of the story and the whole point of El Nino and La Nina, we're seeing a new change in pattern. This is definitely more La Nina conducive. It means more Southern Hemisphere swells that we'd have uh, during our summer months because Patterns like this are more common to develop because the jet stream is weaker, typical in a La Nina year. We can also count on something else, and that's that with still having some fairly warm water off of southern Mexico and Central America, still looking at a good possibility of hurricane formation, but as waters continue to cool, that becomes less likely as the summer goes on, but still the likelihood is still there for a decent amount of tropical activity to form in the coming months. So that's how things are looking right now. We've still got uh, quite a ways to go to see what's going to happen if El Nino could return. Looking a lot doubtful right now at, at this point in time. What that's going to do for our winter months ahead, especially when it comes to weather. Are we going to actually see any rain out of it? Just because we have La Nina doesn't mean we don't get rain. It just lowers the likelihood of getting heavy rains. But as history just showed us from this last year, as far as El Nino went, Southern California didn't necessarily see deluge. Surf, though, was highly affected. We, could have, we saw that near the end of December, especially through January. Very typical, uh, classic textbook El Nino conditions there. But it's too early to call that either way, but what we can do is start calling stuff that's a lot closer to us based off of not just what's happening on the models, but also what's happening with the El Nino-La Nina state going on right now. 
So we definitely have some southern hemisphere swells headed our way thanks to a change in the pattern of the jet stream, which of course is thanking La Nina for that. We've got more of that bulginess coming up. We've got an interrupted jet stream allowing storms to drift northward and send swell to Southern California. So you want to get all the timing on that. I'm keeping a close watch on it. Got that over at forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to get a little bit more frequent with these videos, especially as summer goes on and new things develop. So if you want to stay updated on these videos and some of these reports, all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as soon as one of these reports is posted, one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. You'll get an email from YouTube. It's completely free, no cost to you whatsoever. But of course, the nitty gritty on a regular basis, three times a week, I issue reports for surfingmagazine.com. All you have to do is go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. I concentrate on Southern California, and you'll see the latest and greatest and all the nitty gritty on what's going on surf wise. We also send out emails. Look for the email link to subscribe to that, and you'll be notified as soon as one of my reports is posted there. And from time to time, I also post some things over on Facebook. So if you want to follow me there, feel free. It's at facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. Well, that's all I've got for right now. I wanted to thank you for being a subscriber. I wanted to thank you for watching. And until next time, take care, be safe, and smile on the lineup.